Hey guys, Tech Asian Tour. Welcome to a special video I've been wanting to do for a long time now, but finally, I have the things I needed to make this video possible. And uh, we are going to talk about the world's first headphone, or well, the world's first dynamic headphone, the Biodynamic DT48. Now, this headphone is pretty fascinating if you don't consider one thing. And the, and the thing which you don't have to consider about this headphone is the things it, would, it was used for. If you don't consider that, the, the history and the overall uh, respect of this headphone will increase in such a way that this could, this could easily be your favorite headphone of all time and it surely is for me. But this headphone basically was, was, was uh, if, if you know anything about the World War II, I don't need to explain what happened in that period, but this headphone might not have been used for the greatest cause ever, but technology, you know, in terms of the technology, in terms of the history and overall uh, things about this headphone, it's, 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 it's one of a kind and unlike anything you will ever see in your life. So basically, let's start off with the headphone itself. This headphone was launched in 1936, or actually it was developed in 1936. It was, uh, it was public, not exactly public because it was for the Nazis, but uh, it was issued in 1937. It became public in the 50s, but I'll come to that in a second. But in 1937, this was issued for, you know, sensitive monitoring and the things it was, it was used for. Uh, at that time, uh, the Nazi party, you know, was at their top in terms of power and stuff. So uh, when, when they designed this headphone, they, they really wanted to do a lot of things with it. For example, sensitive spying, you know, and, and just basically just violating privacy and stuff and they just wanted to do all, all kinds of stuff with this headphone so it, when it was designed it was it was it was made in a way that it could give a good frequency response which no, nothing could give at the time i mean the headphone which was there around in, in in the 20s didn't have the frequency response and definitely did not match the dd48 in terms of uh, reproduction of the sound so the dd48 was quite ahead, ahead of its time and still is quite ahead of its time which i'll come to in, in, in further in the video but uh let's talk about the history and then i'll go over the technology of this headphone so 1937 that happened and the word Kofferer was introduced. Now the word Kofferer right now in German means headphones, but not exactly. If you, if you properly convert it, which my friend recently told me, it means head listener. Now the reason they chose this kind of a weird name is to avoid this DD48 being confiscated by the Allies. So they came up with these uh, smart names in which uh, nobody would confiscate these headphones as a you know spying device or anything like that. So these were specifically uh, named and specifically designed in a way that uh, they would not be easily confiscated. For example, if it was if it was not as uh, if, if it was user or if it was big, they would obviously suspect that this is this is doing something something wrong. But but the way they marketed and the way they showed this headphone, it was it was definitely a smart move by the Nazis in terms of uh, uh, you know overall just forwarding this headphone and doing wrong things with it. Uh, so the word Kofferer right now, which everybody uses in in, in, in Germany, it dates back to this headphone, which is quite interesting. Uh, again, if you don't consider the bad things that happened while this headphone was in production, then we then we go to the 50s when this headphone became public uh, to everybody. Uh, now, in the 30s, when it was uh, actually in the 40s and stuff, and it was being used, uh, it was called DD48 Berlin, and it's still unclear how many units were made because, as far as I know, right now there are only two units to be found. One is with a collector, I think, and one is with, is with Biodynamic at the factory. Now, the one which Biodynamic has at the factory is not exactly the one uh, which was ever f the first ever made because the first ever made was actually uh, having a different kind of a headband design. Which the wire dynamic right now has at the at the at the factory is very similar to that of the Franken DD forty eight, which was owned by Stereophile's founder, which is very interesting if you ask me. So if you fast forward to the fifties, the the DD forty eight became public with uh, the help of Nagra. Nagra is a company formed by Kudelski, who who I think was a Swedish engineer, uh, audio engineer and stuff. I don't think he was Swedish. Maybe he was. He was from a different country, he was definitely not from Germany, and he promoted the DD-48s, and uh, the DD-48 was issued under him uh, with the name of the DD-48S for the Nagra tape recorders and stuff. Now, the DD-48S came in two varieties, one was the 5-ohm and one was the 8-ohm, that is the impedance of the headphone, and those came in the early 50s, and they were in production till basically the late, the late 60s, uh, uh, or mid-60s, I think. 
And when we come to the 70s, we had uh, a, a new biodynamic DD48, which was not a DD48E, nor a A, nor a S. It was just a DD48, which was very, very similar to the DD48E, which is right here, but it did not have the E markings on it. And that was a very kind of a weird headphone. It did not run for a long time because it was very different from, from all biodynamics uh, DD48s at that time. It had the black cups like the DD48E, but the ear pads were baffleless and they were different technology and stuff. And they, they basically didn't sound that good, but, with the, but they were using the same 25 and 200 ohm drivers, just different uh, manufacturing stuff. Those were, they, they didn't, they didn't run, run long and biodynamic in the late 70s or in the mid 70s, uh, 70s designed the ear pad, which was, uh, which was a very high technology ear pad in terms of uh, baffle. Now, when Biodynamic designed this headphone, uh, and after the war, Biodynamic shifted to Western Germany for their production of the of, of, of the new headphones and stuff and whatever they were making at that time. So when they shifted, they lost all the documents for this headphone, and and, the, and those documents supposedly had a baffle design and stuff like that, which Biodynamic wanted to implement after the war. But uh, all they lost all the paperwork and stuff, and Eugen Bayer basically just was not interested in uh, in, in spending more time on the DD40. He just wanted to do something else. And, and those and, and those uh, paperwork were and that, that paperwork was gone and the overall interest of uh, just perfecting this headphone was gone and basically biodynamic decided that they would just continue implementing the ear pads and the headbands and, and these small things to improve the sound of this headphone so this is an incomplete headphone and it's it's definitely not uh, something Eugen Bio wanted to you know make at that time he wanted to perfect this headphone but unfortunately due to events he couldn't do that so in the late 70s we get the dd48e which, which is this guy uh, it came in 25 and 200 ohms with these kind of ear pads but not these ones these were the very 21st century ear pads but those are very similar to that of the v6 7506 which i showed you guys uh in, in in my unboxing video which is very similar and i have it in in this box but i'll show you guys that in uh, further in the video or some sometime else but those were high-tech ear pads and they came with a baffle plate which was basically a foam baffle plate and not that uh, acoustic soak which we see on the on the on the on the DD888, uh, 990, 770, DD150, DD250, and all those other headphones. It was a different kind of uh, design, but it definitely improved the sound of the DD48, and uh, that came with the DD48E, which came in as I said, 20, uh, 25 ohms and 200 ohms. Then the DD48A was also there, you know, alongside these headphones, which was designed for audiometry work, which was launched in. Uh, probably the 70s um, but that was that, that only came in uh, 5 ohms so basically there, there are many models of this headphone and uh, this is the DD48E which I have right here with me this is from 1989 and um, that's the history of the DD48 that's how this headphone basically evolved that's how this headphone basically started um, and, and, and it's really fascinating uh, now we're going to talk about the technology of this headphone, which will link to the history as well. So uh, let's talk about the technology. All right. All right, guys, now we get to talk about the technology of this headphone. And this is the place where I don't need notes. I don't need this because I know exactly what this headphone can do. Now, I have played around with some of the best headphones in the world, uh, including the T1, the HD800, the HE60s from Sennheiser, which are $3,000, $2,000 electrostatic headphones and very similar to the HE90 Orpheus, which is a 30 fucking thousand dollar headphone. Uh, what else? I mean, all kinds of headphones, I've tried them. I have auditioned them, and I consider my DD48 to be better than those. Now, not exactly, now, we're not talking about the, the comparisons in this video. We are talking about the technology of this headphone. This headphone uses aluminum diaphragms. Now, Biodynamic at that time, basically the reason they chose aluminum was 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 the reason the, re the reason they chose aluminum was because they did not believe in plastic now plastic at the time like le let's take industrial revolution as an example when the industrial revolution was happening everybody in america started using cast iron and they basically developed things which nobody wanted but they did it because it was available it was in uh, the abundance of of the of cast iron was was, was quite up there so they decided the design and made all kinds of weird stuff same way at that time aluminum was not exactly uncommon uh it was it was a it was a normal metal and everybody started using that in in in, in making things so biodynamic thought hey let's make a diaphragm made up of aluminum now aluminum 
compared to BOPD or cellulose is definitely ha is having higher tensile strength. And if, it's, if something is ha having a higher tensile strength, the breakage point or the breakup at, at in this case, uh, frequencies is going to be very less, close to negligible. This makes the DD48 one of the most distortion-free headphone I have ever listened to in my life. I mean, when I put this headphone on and then I listen to other my other headphones, they sound distorted. They sound bad. They don't sound good. And uh, this just goes to show how amazing this headphone and uh, this headphone is. Now, the aluminum diaphragms which which are used in this headphone are very different from normal dynamic headphones we see today. Uh, the way these are uh, hooked up together is a very uh, very cool way. Basically, this this exact thing which you see this this round thing. This is the diaphragm or this is the, the, the driver uh, uh, housing itself. At the back, we have a very strong high flux density magnet. Then we have a voice coil, either 25 or 200, 5, 8, whatever. And then we have a diaphragm made up of aluminum. The diaphragm which is made out of, made out of aluminum is, is actually uh, is, 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 is embossed with uh, the help of compressed air. So it's, it's very high precision uh, uh, technology inside. Now, since it's, it's using aluminum, it's breakup free and it's having no excursion limits. What excursion means in this case is that since the driver is not glued, glued together, for example, diaphragms, which we see in almost any dynamic headphones today are glued to the voice call, which is then uh, attached to the magnet. In this case, the diaphragms are not glued to the voice coil or to the magnet. I'm sorry. It's actually having a very, very uh, interesting uh, assembly in which the diaphragms are, are, are attached to attached to the magnet in a very very small tolerance in, in, a, in a high magnetic field this makes this headphone virtually breakup free there is no breakup of this headphone at any frequency if you have perfect damping you cannot break the break this headphone it's impossible to break up this headphone the diaphragm is so stiff or and, and so and, and so uh, extremely robust that it just cannot rattle there is no limit in terms of bass which is one of the you know one of the weird things about this headphone because it does so many things in, in in so many ways that it's, it's it's quite fascinating now the aluminum which this guy uses uh, is is very similar to that which was used in 1937 uh biodynamic did not change the the overall composition of the of the aluminum they basically they just according to biodynamic the, the supply has changed and stuff and that, that's going to happen because the, the run of this headphone has been quite long it's been in production uh for almost 77 years now and it's not in production now but for 77 years so obviously supply has changed and tolerances might have gone here and there but the overall composition has has remained the same over these years and the and the overall precision of this headphone is unlike anything out there now this is the DD48E. If you talk about the DD48A, the DD48A is one of the most precise and the most closely matched headphones in the world. Uh, the DD48 is 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 so closely matched that it's unlike anything you will hear. Even this, I hear some tolerances, uh, one dB, and that's not audible to me. That's just something I'm assuming, but it's still very tight and better than all the other headphones I currently have. So, technology-wise unlike anything out there reproduction is fantastic and i'm not going to talk about the sound in this video because that's not what i'm going to do it's just the technology of this headphone but man these are these are fantastic the build quality of these headphones is unlike anything you will ever see in your life i mean the build of this headphone if, if you if you pick up this headphone everything else feels like a piece of dash it really does the, this headphone makes other headphones look and feel like toys it, it's so amazingly well built that it's 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 amazing. Overall, the DD48 is a very important headphone. Uh, I, I call it a, the most technologically advanced and the most revolutionary invention of all time. Uh, that is the DD48 to me. It's a, it's a very important headphone, and I definitely want to have the DD48A, the DD48S, and possibly the DD48 Berlin in my collection because I'm going to Germany this summer for a, a factory visit to Biodynamics factory. So. If I go there and if everything goes well, I might be able to see the DD48 uh, DD 1937 Berlin. If not, I'm very happy with this DD48 and it's definitely one of the greatest headphones ever made. Uh, so, <clears throat> hope you enjoyed it. Hope you guys got a good perspective of this headphone. It really is unlike anything out there in the market. It's beautiful. It's amazing. It's the Biodynamic DD48. Alright, I'll see you guys next time with another video. Okay, take it easy and have a good one. Bye.